Welcome, welcome to the 11th webinar that we've ho uh, hosted this year. My name's Chris Withers. I'm the Broker Distribution Director for Ecclesiastical. Um, we've deliberately chosen Andy Bounds as our Christmas special, as our bumper edition, as the finale to our 2022 um, schedule of webinars. All the recordings from the previous webinars can be found on our Broker Training Hub. And don't forget that we also have uh, uh, podcasts covered in 15, which can also be accessed from our website or wherever you download your podcasts from. But the whole purpose of all of this brokered training material is that we're we're focusing on topics that you've said are important to you. And we, you know, we want to help you in those areas that are important to you and, and can continue to position ourselves as your trusted insurance provider. This webinar has slightly more selfish um, logic behind it because Andy Bounds webinar, the easiest way to fill your pipeline and stop your boss complaining, could easily have been written for us um, or could have been written to say to stop ecclesiastical complaining and help you fill your pipeline. Because if you fill your pipeline, then that helps us because we've had three fantastic years of, of new business growth. But we look forward to 2023 and hopefully a fourth year. And we want you to have healthy growing pipelines so as we can help you with those pipelines and help you with the conversion of those pipelines. So there is a very selfish reason for, for the purposes of, of this webinar as well. But without further ado, I will hand over to Andy, who can take you through the rest of the session. OK, thanks very much, Chris. And um, can I just check, Chris, can you see my face and can you see my slides? I can see both. Yes, thank you. OK, good. Maybe spend more time looking at my slides. It's less offensive. And welcome everyone to today's session. So you'll see here we've been recorded. So and all that sort of stuff. However, I desperately want to hear from you if you want to tell me things. So we have a lovely chat box function. If you have any questions for me, type them in there. Um, you can come off mute and talk to me if you're happy to be recorded in that way. That's all good. So today we've got this wonderful heading of easy referrals. We know referrals are the easiest way for us to grow our business. So people love us and they tell other people about us. And imagine if every single one of your customers, if every single one referred you to one of their mates and you managed to close that sale, you would literally double the size of your business. And the amount of horrible cold calling you had to do would be nil, like just nil. People would just recommend you to people and it would be nice and easy. So referrals are a simply glorious thing. The only trouble is nobody refers us often enough. And here's the thing. We've got 130 people on this webinar now. So clearly all 130 of you will go and recommend me to your clients, except you won't, even if you love this webinar, because that's not how the world works. So just because they love you doesn't mean you're going to get a referral. But if you can engineer some referrals, well, you can double the size of your business without doing very much work at all. Now, of course, there are other ways that you can grow your business as well, and we're going to be looking at all those. One thing we will not be doing today is things that brokers tend to hate, like cold calling, like stalking people, like talking to a whole room of strangers if you hate talking to that room of strangers. All of those have their place, but today we're looking at easy, easy ways, look at the subtitle, that we can fill our pipeline and stop the boss. And it seems Chris Withers complaining. Now, if we break this down, if you want to be really good at growing your business, only four things matter. So we're trying to get more referrals. So firstly, we need to fill our pipeline. Now, I don't know if you like the word pipeline. Pipeline, another word for this is potential people who might give you money. And what I tend to find with people's pipelines is they either don't have very much in it or they've got too much in it. And that's where it's not really a pipeline. It's like a pipe dream. <laughs> well, I met somebody about eight months ago and they've not bought anything yet, but I'm sure they will soon. I'll keep them in for the next eight years. Pipe dream, not pipeline. Right. So we want to fill this. We want to have enough people that we think if we could close all these, that would be good. Not too many and not too few. And here's a little rule for you as far as pipeline goes. Generally, the customers you want are a bit like the customers you've got. So the customers you want are like the customers you've got. Of course, you can try and grow and go in, in, in weird different ways, but the customers you want are like the customers you've got. For example, about five or six years ago, we started doing some work with a couple of pharmaceutical companies and we had huge success with them and their sales went up as a result. 
So what we did after that is we thought, all oh, right, the customers we want are like the customers we've got. We've got two pharmaceutical companies. Let's see if we can try and get more of them. So what we did is we went on things like Google. You might have heard of it. Wikipedia, you might have heard of that. And we found the largest 50 pharmaceutical companies in Britain because the customers we want are like the customers we've got. We've got to. Let's get more. So we worked out what the other 48 were called. And then we did a little bit of work to find who the people we wanted to speak to was. And then we had a list of people we wanted to speak to. This sounds like a lot of work. So if you don't want to do the top 50, just do the top five. So if you work with, I don't know, an automobile company in um, Harrow, then go on LinkedIn or go on Google or go on Wikipedia, go wherever you go to find other automobile companies in Harrow. Right. So you just get someone who's similar to what you've got. When we got this list of names, what we then did is we then worked backwards to see, could we find anyone who knew these people? So one of the people we wanted to speak to was a lady called, um, let's say, Jemima um, in a company. Let's say it was Pfizer. Right. Neither of those names are true. Protecting the innocent. So I want to speak to Jemima at Pfizer. I did a bit of work and I found out that I knew someone who knew Jemima. I had a chat with this person. They introduced me to Jemima. And sure enough, we were working with Pfizer or whatever they were called pretty quickly. We didn't get into all 50 of them, but we did get into 19 of them and we didn't have to cold call any of them. We didn't have to stalk anyone. We didn't have to go to any like congresses, which were full of pharmaceutical companies. So all we do is the companies you want, the customers you want to like the customers you've got, do a bit of work, find out what they're called and then see if you can get referrals into them. That's one way to fill your pipeline. All right? It's really easy. Um, when you've got your pipeline, as Chris said before, share your pipeline with people who can help you. So if I want to work with pharmaceutical companies, I could speak to my friend Chris at Ecclesiastical and say, Chris, I really want to speak to some pharmaceutical companies. Who do you know who works in pharmaceutical companies? Can you help us out here? Because it's quite possible Chris's brother or sister works for some pharmaceutical company. I'm sharing it with someone who knows people like Chris knows people. And so, yes, I know Chris said it helps Chris and it helps Ecclesiastical if you guys share stuff with him, but also it helps you as well. Now, there, of course, there are other people even more well connected than Chris is. So when you know who you want, share your list with people who can help you. You will be amazed how quickly your business grows if you get that right. And we're going to look at those two things first today. Once you've done that, we then need to be able to close the sales, to be able to close the referral, if you like. So what is it we say to people to actually get them to refer us? Because this doesn't work, right? If I go up to Chris and say, Chris, please, can you give me a referral? It doesn't work because Chris doesn't want to give me a referral. Um, Chris prefers his friend Jemima to me, so he doesn't really want to do that. He feels a bit uncomfortable about it. So here's the challenge. What we've said is this. Number one, referrals are good. But number two, we don't get as many referrals as we want. So number three, we need to ask for more referrals. But number four, we can't use the word referral. So it's like, it's all really so close and tantalizing and close, but we can't nail it. So we're then going to look at, once we're looking at filling and sharing, how do we close it? What words do we say to actually get that referral? And then the final thing is, how do we embed it so it becomes part of our working life? I ask for at least two referrals a week and I have done for about 15 years. If you've got a calculator with you, do this sum. Two times however many weeks there are in a year times 15 years. That's the number of referrals I ask for as a minimum. OK, that's a very, very, very big number. It's like 1500 or something referrals. That's as a minimum. And to be honest, I ask for more than that anyway. But as a minimum each week, I ask for two. So that's what I mean by embedding it. How can you every week for the rest of your career ask for one, two, three referrals a week so it just becomes part of your day job? Now, if you want to be good at referrals, if you want to be good at growing your pipeline, so it's a pipeline, not a pipe dream, they're the only four things you need to do. Fill it. Who do you want? Share it with people who can refer you. Close it by saying the right thing and embed it so you do it all the time. I'm just going to take a sip of water because what I thought was a passionate introduction has become a shouty rant. Everything's better now. Now, please remember, if you have any questions at any point today, I know I haven't explained any of these, so don't ask the question, how do you close it, Andy? Because I'm going to show you how to do all these four things. But if you do have any questions, please type them in the chat box and Chris can be our chat box monitor. And every 20 minutes or so, Chris, I'll just say, have you got any questions in the chat box? And you can share them with me if that's OK. 
Right, so I know some of you have heard me speak before, and I know some of those people might have seen this next slide. I make no apologies for showing it to you again. It's an important one. If you haven't seen me before and wonder who this strange, shouting, balding man is, this next slide shows you why referrals are so useful. And it also shows you other things you should do to grow your business. Here we go. If you want to generate easy leads, sales is basically three things. You win the work, you wow the client, and you hope for win some more work. Right, that's sales done. Win and wow and win again. Now, as far as winning the work goes, you need to get a meeting with a stranger, someone you don't know. This is, so this is like if you're trying to get a sale from scratch. So you might do cold calling. You might do LinkedIn. You might go to some, I don't know, some Congress full of pharmaceutical people and wander around not knowing anyone and then just think this is not a good use of my time. So you have to get in front of strangers somehow. Then you have to vet them. Do you want to work with them or not? If they carry on banging on about price, maybe not. All right. Um, oh, by the way, if you want to overcome the price objection, I want you to remember two words, script and practice. The way you overcome the price objection, script, work out what you're going to say in response to it and practice, practice saying it. Objections are verbal things. So you need to have a verbal script and you need to have practiced it verbally so you're able to get rid of it. So if someone says to you something along the lines of this sounds quite expensive, you could say, oh, I don't often hear people say that. Please, could you help me understand why you think this sounds expensive? So you put it back on them or another one. They might say something like this sounds quite expensive. And you could say when you say expensive, what do you mean to expensive? The cost of the insurance or the cost if you didn't have insurance and your North Sea oil platform blew up. This isn't a priority at the minute, this insurance. OK, that's fine. Please, could you help me understand what would make it a priority? Well, if our house burnt down. OK, so you're waiting for that to happen, are you? <laughs> That's what we call the burglar alarm objection response. Here's a question for you. When do you think most people buy a burglar alarm, everyone? That's right, just after they've been burgled. And when maybe would have been a better time to buy it? Just before. OK, anyway, so you vet them. So if they carry on banging on about price, you think this is all about price and you can't script and practice your way, you might think I don't want to work with these people because they're just trying to bind me down on price. And then if you do want to work with them and they want to work with you, you then hopefully win the sale, you convert the business. Then it's the question of wowing the client. The, the way you wow the client is not just delivering brilliant service. I know you think delivering brilliant service wows the client. No, it doesn't. I was paying for your brilliant service. When you did your lovely sales pitch, you promised brilliant service. So you doing brilliant service is not going above and beyond what I was expecting because I was expecting that. All right. So if you want to wow me, yes, deliver brilliantly, but also surprise me. Do something that I wasn't expecting. I shouldn't have to tell brokers this, but some brokers are going to be amazed by what I'm about to say. If you want to surprise your client, contact them during the year. Don't just wait till month 12 at renewal time when they're price sensitive anyway and say, I've not spoken to you for 12 months, but here's a blank, bland email sent out from our autoresponder. Um, would you like to renew? All right. That's not good. All right? That's delivering it, maybe, but you're not surprising me at all. So, Contact me during the year, offer me extra value. I don't know, invite me to an event, introduce me to somebody useful. Like, just surprise me, do more than what you promised you would do. So that's how you wow people. And then finally, win again. The three ways you win again are this. If I'm currently buying from you, if I buy more insurance from you, that's an upsell. Sneezer, that's when I want you to listen to this. This is a really easy way for you to get more referrals. A sneezer is this. This is I am your buyer. And I currently work for Andy Bounds Limited, my company, right? For some reason, I got headhunted by Pfizer and I'm now working for Pfizer. So I've now moved employer. So your existing em uh, buyer, this person, this man, this woman has now moved employers. Now, when I go and work for my new company, I love you. And I know how good the insurance is that you get for me. So I am so passionate about you. I might take you with me. So if you like, I sneeze over my new colleagues with how wonderful you are. So a sneezer is an existing buyer who moves jobs and sneezes over their new employer, like snots over their new employer, showering your praise all over them. Sneezers are my number one source of new business. I think they could be your number one source of new business as well, because what happens is this. When someone moves jobs to a new employer, all right, they want to make their mark when they go there. They want to be seen to adding value early. 
Now, I believe it's extremely powerful if they can bring some quick wins into their organization. It's good for them. It's good for the organization. That is the time when most people are most likely to bring you in when they're new. OK, so if you can follow them and say, oh, good old LinkedIn tells me you move jobs. How are you settling in? Blah, de, blah, de, blah. That is a very powerful source of business. It's the thing a lot of brokers don't get right I, in my experience. What happens is if I say I'm moving to Pfizer, you'll come to me and say, all right, Andy, well, good luck in the new job. Um, who's going to replace you? And could you introduce me to them so we can keep the account? Now, that's a good thing to say, right? So make sure you keep the account. But you're missing the fact that I'm about to move and I could take you with me. So, yeah, you retain the thing, you get your renewal, but you miss the upsell. You miss the sneezer sale because you're not following me to the new job. Now, if you already do that, then just feel smug. But most people don't do that. And finally, referrals. This is where I introduce you to Jemima. OK, so I introduce you to someone. Now, if you look at this here, these things are really important because if you think of your business, your business will be really strong at some of these, but not so strong at the other ones. If you want to win business, if you want to shut the boss up, if you want to shut Chris from Ecclesiastical up, then I want you all to remember that the right hand side, you get a lot of bang for your buck on the right hand side. Because if you upsell to me, that's one of the orange things. It means you don't need to go and get in front of a stranger. You've got a meeting with a decision maker by ringing me up and having a chat with me. Yeah. Um, if you, if I move jobs, you've got a meeting with a decision maker because I now work for Pfizer and I've taken you with me. If I introduce you to Jemima, you've got a meeting with a decision maker. So the nice thing about these orange ones is you bypass that horrible stuff we hate, like cold calling and going to stupid bloody congresses. Like nobody likes doing things like that. Well, if you do, then keep doing it. But if you don't, you just ring your mates. Now, all we need to know now is what to say to these people. What I'm basically saying is think of every single person you know, you have probably got in the people you know, your existing contact sphere, you probably got everything you need to be able to massively increase in size. You don't need to go and speak to strangers unless you really want to. People have this weird thing that lead generation means talking to strangers, probably on the phone. No, it doesn't. Don't talk to strangers, talk to your mates and don't go on the phone. Probably you're probably just going to drop a little email and set up a meeting with them. I want to have a look at with you at upsells and sneezers. Remember, this is where you're talking to me, either because upsell. I still work for Andy Bounds Limited and I'm now going to buy more from you or a sneezer. You're still talking to me, but I've moved jobs. So this next slide is my favorite sales technique. All right, so I've told you my favorite people to target are sneezers, and this is what I say to them. But I use this same approach with sneezers and with upsells. So here we go. So I'm saying basically do the orange. If you want to hit your targets, do the orange. If you want no grief, do the orange. If you don't want to hit your targets and you want loads of grief, go cold calling. So let's have a look at the right hand side, upsells and sneezers. This is what I do with upsells and sneezers, what I call my three H's. Do this every single week and every single week it leads to a new opportunity for me. What you do is this. You ring me up either at my current place of work or if I've recently moved jobs and I'm a potential sneezer for you. Let's do the example of the upsell to start with. So I'm still Andy Bounds, the man working for Andy Bounds Limited, the company. You get in contact with me and you have a chat and you ask me what my main priorities are. OK. In business, not about insurance, not about, you know, buying more stuff from you, but just generally what my main focus is in business. Now is a brilliant time to do this. All right. An absolutely brilliant time. We're coming to the end of the year. How are things going? What are the main things you need to get boxed off before the end of the year? Looking forward to next year. What are your main priorities going to be in 2023? OK, it's the perfect time of year to do it. Yep. So either get these conversations now, what are your main priorities, or why don't you spend a bit of time now seeing if you can book some meetings in early January? So I know things will be busy with Christmas. Let's just book a cup of tea in, in the new year, see how things are going. And in the new year, hello, did you have a nice Christmas? Let's talk about 2023. What are your main priorities for 2023? So find out what their business priorities are. When you find those out, you ask the salesperson's best three questions, uh, sorry, best three words. So write these words down if you would. I've not written them down on a slide for you. However, I respond to the question, what are your hot priorities? You say these three words. Tell me more. World's best sales question. 
So you say to me, Andy, what are your main priorities for the year? And I say, the main thing I want to be able to do is to be able to keep making sales despite this cost of living crisis. And you say, oh, that's interesting, Andy. Tell me a bit more. Well, why is that your main priority? Well, I say, and then I'll tell you more about it. So when you say, Andy, what's your main priority for 2023? Oh, tell me more about that. You really understand what's going on inside my head. OK, if you don't like the word sales, think of the word customer service. You should know what your customers main priorities are. Play this game at home for fun on your own. Don't talk in the chat box. Don't tell me about it. Don't tell anyone about it. Ask yourself, how good are you at speaking regularly enough to your customers to know what their main priorities are? Or are you one of these people who don't trouble them during the year and just send the renewal thing in month 12? All right, so grade yourself how good you are at this ABC. If you see, you need to raise your game a bit. Just speak to them a bit more often. What are your main priorities at the minute? Oh, tell me more about that. And when you've done that, you then say, all oh, right, Andy, so you want to increase your sales given the standard of living trouble. Um, how can we help you with that? So you will just say, how can we help you with that? How can my company, how can my broker firm help you with that? I'm probably going to say, I don't know. And then you can say this. What about this? And then what you can do is you can offer a solution to me. If you've got a particular product that will help me, you can offer me that. Or you could say, how about this? Let me go and have a think about it. Let me go and look at what my other clients are doing at the minute. Let me go and see if I can find anything you'll find useful about your priority. And then I'll circle back tomorrow and let you know. How's that sound, Andy? Oh, that sounds amazing. Thanks very much. So these three H's are really easy. If you're meeting someone today, you could do this as part of your conversation. Let's say you're having lunch with me today. Then at some point during the dessert, you say, oh, by the way, Andy, 2023, what are your main priorities? Oh, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. <sighs> Sounds hard, that. How can I help with that? Well, I don't know either. How about this, Andy? Let me go back to the office and ask me, mate, see if I think of any good ideas, find useful insights. Would that be all right? I could give you a buzz if I do. That's very good of you. Yeah, thanks very much. Easy, 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 easy. All right. It's easy. This a lot of selling is hard. This isn't. This is easy. You're talking to someone who knows you and likes you anyway. There you go. Sneezers is exactly the same thing. So now I've moved jobs and I'm now working for Pfizer. You get in contact with me and say something like this. Hi, Andy. How's the new job going? Very well. Thanks for asking. And you're straight into the first stage. And what are your main priorities in your new job? What they recruited you to do, Andy? Well, they've recruited me. I need to increase our sales throughout Europe. <gasps> that sounds hard. Tell me more about that, Andy. Well, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. After I've spoken for a bit, how can I help you expand across Europe? I have no idea. Neither have I. How about I go back to the office and see if anyone's got anything useful? Easy, 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 easy. You know me anyway. I like you. I'll take your call, whether I work for Andy Bounds Limited or Pfizer Limited, or you could call, call strangers. So before I carry on, I'd like you all to just have a little think about this. I want you to identify. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. Let's say three people you could have a three H's conversation with. So think of all your main clients, your main contacts. Think of someone who's moved job recently. You got really annoyed because they now work for Pfizer. So write down the name of three people, not in the chat box, just on a piece of paper. He could have a three H's chat with either sometime in December or early January. So you just write down three names. Don't tell me, just write the names. OK, cool. Um, just so you know, a bit later on, I'm going to ask you all um, uh, with your agreement um, to type in the chat box. What's been your favorite thing you've learned from our webinar so far? So don't do it now. We'll do that in a bit. But if you could just be thinking what you're finding most helpful here, because much as it's hopefully helpful to hear me talk about stuff, it's really helpful when you see your peers right in the chat box. Well, I found that helpful because sometimes people will put something in there. They think, oh, I forgot that. And that's actually a useful reminder. So don't do it now, but just be thinking what are you finding most 
most helpful here. Um, all right, cool. What I thought we'd do with your agreement, ladies and gentlemen, is I want to show you one more thing. We'll do a bit of referrals. And then after that, we're going to see if there's any questions in the in the chat box. So get typing your questions. Chris, get monitoring the chat box for us. And let's just have a quick look at referrals. So that'll take about three or four minutes and then we'll have a little Q&A. So quick reminder, what we've said is this. We have said we can either try and get in front of strangers, horrible, or we can bypass all that by doing one of our orange things. And I've shown you the three H's work for upsells, the three H's work for sneezers. Let's look at the third orange thing, which is doing referrals. Now, how do we do referrals? Here's Andy's favorite script to do referrals. Remember I said before, if I say to Chris, Chris, can you refer me into Jemima? He might not want to do that. And the problem is I want the I want a referral, but I don't want to say the word referral in case he doesn't want to do the referral because it feels a bit like he's lining my pocket. So instead, what I say to Chris is this. I don't use the word referral, not sexy for Chris, sexy for me, not sexy for Chris, who's going to do the referral. So instead, what I do is I use the very sexy word to Chris. I ask the word advice and I say to him, Chris, can I ask you advice about something? And that dotted line there says, Andy, shut up. So Chris, can I ask you advice about something? And Chris goes, uh, yeah, you can. And then I say, well, I saw that you know Jemima. I'd love to have a chat with Jemima because I think I might be able to help her. Now, I use the word afters. You'll probably use the word benefits. So why could I help Jemima after working with her? Could I help Jemima get better cover? Could I help Jemima reduce her insurance claim? Could I help Jemima get paid claims more quickly? Could I help Jemima look good to the boss? Could I help Jemima use insurance as a competitive advantage? So I use the word after. Why is she better off after me? You might use the word benefit. What benefit can I bring? It means the same thing. So listen to what I'm saying here. I start with Chris, can I ask your advice, please? Thank you. You know, your friend Jemima, who works for this company, I'd love to have a chat with her to see if I can help her with eh, whatever the benefit to Jemima is. Obviously, Chris, I don't want to call caller because I'm rubbish at that. Um, how would you advise I approach you? So I don't ask for the referral, I ask for advice. And the great thing about this is Chris will give me this advice. What would you do if I asked you that? He'd probably say, well, I'll just introduce you. So oh, thanks, Chris. I hadn't even thought of that. I mean, it's like as simple as that. So the great thing is, I didn't say to Chris, please, can you refer me? Because he might not have wanted to. And I wish I hadn't asked then. But when I ask a question in this way, I'm only asking for his advice. He's the one who suggested the introduction. And I said, that's nice, Chris. When do you think you might be able to do that? I'll do it this week for you, Chris. He's the one who said, I'll introduce you. He's the one who said this week. So he's more likely to do it. If you want to write this down, basic rule of human psychology, people are very committed to things they have come up with. Chris came up with the referral idea. I just asked his advice. Chris was the one who said he'd do it this week. Therefore, he's much more committed to it. If I say to my children, please be inside of your bedroom before your granny comes this weekend, they will say no. But if I say to them, kids, can I ask your advice about something? And they go, yeah. I say, well, granny's coming this weekend. By the way, my mum, that's their granny, is blind. OK, so I say granny's coming this weekend. Um, I want to make sure it's easy for it to get around the house. Uh, and you've got stuff all over your bedroom floor. That's not fair for a blind person. Um, how can we make sure this is fine for when granny comes back? And they'll just say, oh, I'll tidy it up, dad. <laughs> and because they said they tidy it up, they will tidy it up. If I say tidy it up because your granny's coming, they'll say tidy it up yourself. But if I say granny's coming, what do you reckon we could do? They say I'll tidy it and they will. And then I can even remind them on Friday. Oh, you know how you said you were going to tidy up because your granny's coming tomorrow? Have you done it yet? OK, you better do it now because I don't want you to forget before Granny's here. Yeah, you're welcome. I was happy to remind you. Love you. Parenting. So if I say to Chris, how would you advise I approach him? And Chris says, I'll introduce you. I'll say when and I've got a good chance of the referral. He might say, well, I'll tell you what, Andy, why don't you just email her? She's really nice. And I'll say, I will do, Chris. Do you mind if I use your name in that email? I'll say, yeah, fill your boots. So look at this. If you ask in this way, can I ask your advice? All right. Chris is likely to say, I'll introduce you or Chris will say, oh, just send her an email. And then I say, well, can I use your name? Here's the final thing I'm going to show you before we go to Q&A. This is what the email to Jemima says. I don't know Jemima, but Jemima doesn't know me, but she does know Chris Withers. OK. So I might send this little email which says something like this. So the subject line, the client, the target client is called Jemima. 
So I go, Jemima, the referrer is called Chris Withers. So she gets an email. She doesn't know me. An email which says, Jemima, comma, Chris Withers from Ecclesiastical suggested I email you to ask dot, dot, dot. All right, so Jemima is really likely to open that email. OK, if the email had said meeting request, she'd delete it. Andy Bounds dash an introduction, she'd delete it. Should we connect? She'd delete it. Jemima, your mate Chris said we should have a call. Well, she'll open it. So the great thing about referrals is they accelerate trust. Remember those words, accelerate trust, they accelerate trust. So I emailed Jemima mentioning Chris's name. Then I do a very tiny little email and all this email does, it doesn't sell me, it sells the phone call. So I don't do a massive, here's a link to a case study and here's like a PDF showing our values and all that rubbish. All it does is a tiny little email which sells, I'm going to call her tomorrow. Hi, Jemima. Nice to meet you. Chris thought it would be worth the speaking. He tells me that you're interested in. And as a business, we specialise in that. I'd love to have a quick chat with you to brief you on some of the trends I'm seeing. You might want to write that phrase down. Brief you on some of the trends I'm seeing. In other words, it's in Jemima's interest to take this call. I'm going to brief you on some of the trends I'm seeing. Like you have a challenge with X. I'm an expert on X. I'm going to brief you on some of the trends I'm seeing about X. If you want, I could make it even more dynamic and say, I'd love to brief you on some of the trends I'm seeing in your sector. Right. She'll definitely want to speak that because I'm going to tell her what her competitors are doing. Right. And then I just say, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow to chat this through. Bye. I love this approach because what happens is when I do ring the next day, if any of you get nervous ringing strangers, this email gets rid of all your nerves. Because if you get through to Jemima, you just basically say this email again and say, oh, hi, Jemima. Chris Withers suggested I get in contact with you. My name's Andy. Yeah, Chris suggested we speak because he tells me you're interested in X. Well, I'm an expert in X and I, he thought it'd be worth the cheeking so I could brief you on some of the trends. And then you're off and running. And here's the other thing. If I ring the next day and I get the gatekeeper, what do gatekeepers always ask? Think about gatekeepers. We all hate gatekeepers, right? Um, so gatekeepers, what are they going to ask? Does Jemima know what the call's regarding? We've all been asked that, right? Does Jemima know what the call's regarding? Yeah, I sent an email yesterday about it. Does she know where you're ringing from? Yeah, I sent an email yesterday about it. Is it a sales call? No, we got a mutual contact called Chris with us who suggested I get in contact with her. Well, she didn't tell me you were going to ring. Yeah, well, these things happen. That's fine. But I did promise I would call and I'd hate for her to think I've broken my promise. That wouldn't be fair. Please, could you put me through? Thank you. Notice those three words to get past the gatekeeper. Promise, fair and thank you. I did promise I'd call and I'd hate for her to think I've broken my promise. That wouldn't be fair. All right. I promised I'd call. Don't want to break the promise. That wouldn't be fair. And then I ended with thank you. So please, could you put me through? Thank you. It works really well. If you say, please, could you put me through? It's very easy for them to say no to that. Please, could you put me through? Thank you. It's like assumptive. And if you say, um, comes back and say, oh, what's the call regarding? You say, well, it's just regarding the email that I sent yesterday. Please, could you put me through? Thank you. I'm sure some of you can think of a situation where that won't work. So can I. But what we're trying to do is try to find things that are more likely to work. And what I think we've agreed is this. Go on the left hand side, try and cold call strangers. Not very easy. Go on the right hand side, upsells and sneezes with the three H's. Pretty easy. Referrals, don't ask for a referral, just ask for advice. Pretty easy. If they say they'll introduce you, it's pretty easy. Because you just go, hello, Jemima. Chris asked me to ring. He says you're expecting my call. And if you do an email, I've given you example wording that you can use. Time for me to have a little drink of water. Chris, have you, or indeed anybody, Got any questions about what I've been ranting about so far before we do a bit more on how to embed this stuff so it's easy? The questions so far, Andy, have been around accessing your slides because uh, I think everyone is picking up on the fact that this would be great to share with their teams. So that's that's a positive. No specifics at this moment in time, though, on what you've said. I am. Um, I don't think I've ever heard my name mentioned that many times in half an hour since I left school. Enjoying and, those uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's 
slightly scary, if I'm honest. <laughs> and um, also, I've been fed that my delivery is quite shouty and scary anyway. So it's not just your name being mentioned, it's being shrieked. Um, <laughs> so if you've got any questions now, if not, it's no problem, because let me go on to some other stuff. By the way, of course, I'll share the slides with you later, Chris, and you can send them out to everybody, right? Great. Thank you. Yeah, no, keep going then, and I'm sure the questions will flow through. OK, perfect. Right, beautiful. So um, I'll tell you what, well, why don't I ask you guys a question then? How about this? Let's give you a bit of a break from me. Do you remember I said at one point I was going to ask you to type in the chat box something you found helpful? Could you please do that now for me? I'll stop sharing the screen for a bit so the chat box is bigger for you and you can read what everybody else is writing. So just type in the chat box of everything I've said so far. What's been your number one takeaway? And after we've done that, I'll then show you how to make this easy and embed it so you do it every week. And just as you would introduce that new element, a question did come through. So whilst uh -huh. people think about what they're going to type in there, mm -hmm. there was a question about after the initial call to the referral, what is your follow up process? Great question. So let's see what the chat box says, Chris, and then we'll have a look. So you can all read, I was going to say as well as I can, better than I can. So you have a quick read and see if you can pick up another idea or two from reading what everybody else is saying. So I'll just give you a minute without me talking. Have a read of the chat box, make any extra notes you want to, and then I'm going to answer that brilliant question. Perfect. Very good. Thank you. This is why I like doing this, because actually a couple of you have written things that I forgot and I had said. So <laughs> That's all really good. I'm glad to see that a lot of you are talking about sneezes. Um, sneezes are really easy things to do. Um, here's a great little exercise for you to do. Either delegate this to one of your team or do it yourself. Um, I delegate this to my team uh, every quarter. What they do is they look at everyone who's bought from us in the last two years. Um, and what we do is we check on LinkedIn to see if they've moved jobs. So it's really easy, right? You just have a look at, you know, if you've got like thousands of clients, just use your biggest paying 10, 20, 50, 100, choose your number. And what you do is regularly just see if they've moved jobs. If they've moved jobs, you get in contact with them and say, hi, how's the new job going? Blah, blah, blah. And if they haven't moved jobs, hi, not spoken to you for a bit. Have you got time for a quick catch up? I've got things I want to brief you on, brief you on trends in the sector. Yeah. Uh, so it's a really good thing. So all your big buyers, if you do that regularly, you always remember to do it. If you don't do it regularly, well, you don't. Um, OK, that's really good. So um, here's another thing. Um, this question about what's the follow up process to the initial call. So what I'm looking for here is when I get through to Jemima and um, I start off with, oh, hi, Jemima, Chris Withers suggested I call bloody blah, blah. My name's Andy. Um, my aim is. I want that call. In fact, I'm going to stop sharing my slides here because I'm going to um, go multimedia with you and write on a piece of paper. What I want is that follow up referral call. I want it to be two words beginning with I. So I'm sorry I carry on doing like three H's and two I's and so on. This is a really useful thing to remember in a sales point of view. So when I speak to Jemima, the first thing is I want it to be invaluable to Jemima. I want Jemima to think, oh, that was really useful. That was. Yeah. So I want to give Jemima at least one nugget where she thinks, oh, I never knew that. You might want to write that phrase down. Oh, I never knew that. So always prepare things you can teach somebody so they say, oh, I never knew that. But here's the thing, and this is the important thing when you refer when you're following up a referral. The second I stands for incomplete. And what I mean by incomplete is I want to say enough that Jemima thinks it's invaluable, but also there has to be incomplete. In other words, we need to chat again. So let's say during the conversation, I teach Jemima something really useful and she goes, oh, I never knew that. That's invaluable. And then I make it incomplete by saying, well, I'll tell you what, if you find that helpful, I'd be really happy, Jemima, just to invest some time finding a couple more examples of that and also a couple more insights that other customers have found helpful. And would that be useful to you? 
And Jemima says, yeah, that'd be good. I said, I'll tell you what, let's just schedule time for a bit more of a chat and I can do that and bring it with me. How would that be? That's very nice, she says. So if you like, the only aim of that first call really is to have the second call. So the only aim of that first call is to have the second call. So when I'm on the first call, all I'm doing is I'm getting in contact. Keep mentioning Chris. This is not a sales call. Chris thought we should speak. He tells me you're interested in this. My specialism is this. Really happy to brief you on some stuff I'm seeing. Already it's invaluable. I might then say, have you got five minutes now or should we schedule a bit of time in? Yeah. If she says she has got five minutes, I'll teach her a little bit and then I'll say, but you know what? Let me do a bit more research and then I can come back to you. The story I give with this invaluable and incomplete, this is very exciting for me. So I live in Liverpool or near Liverpool and I support Manchester United, which is maybe not very tactically wise. So here's Manchester United and my team. Uh, and a few years ago, I was given a referral to meet Mike Phelan, who at the time was Manchester United's assistant manager. So this was really cool, meeting my team's assistant manager, dead good. And I was meeting him. And what I really wanted to do was have a conversation with him such that he would meet me again and again and again. And it actually worked because we ended up doing webinars together. and It was all really good and everything was good. Now, however scared you might feel, I don't know if you do feel scared, but however nervous or intimidated you feel by going into these meetings, times it by 100. And that was me, my, me, my feeling. So I remembered, what would I teach my clients with this? Invaluable and incomplete. So when I was meeting Mike and after I'd sort of stopped doing the fanboy looking at him in a slightly funny way, um, he asked me a question about if I do some after dinner speeches, like, how much should I charge for that, Andy? Because a lot of sports people do like after dinner speeches, not necessarily because they need the money. They just really enjoy talking about sports or a bunch of sports lovers. Right. So I thought invaluable and incomplete. So I said, well, I can give you a bit of an overview, Mike, from what I know. But what I'll do is, if you want, let me go and ask some of my other colleagues who work in sport or some of the other speakers I know or people who hire other speakers and now I can find a really good range for you, which has got a bit of science behind it. And maybe we can meet for a cup of tea and I can give you that. How would that be? And Mike was like, that's really nice of you. Thanks very much. That's what I mean by valuable and incomplete. So I gave him a bit of an answer now, but I gave him such a valuable promise. It was absolutely in his interest to meet with me again. OK, so that's what I mean by invaluable and incomplete. If somebody says I've got a bit concerned about the tax ramifications of this and you have got a white paper on us in the office, say, I think we might have something in the office. Let me look into that. And when we meet again, I'll bring it with me and I'll be able to go through the relevant bits with you. What you don't do is say I've got a white paper and I'll send it to you because if you send it to them, it's become complete and they don't need to meet you again. So this is a really big, long, ranty answer to that excellent question, Chris. Basically, two words beginning with I, invaluable and incomplete. I impress them and then say, I'll tell you what, let's book in a time where we can do something more useful. OK, well done. So here we go. So I've now put our slide on. Um, that was the email we were going to send after Chris Withers, not mentioning his name for a bit. Chris Withers, Chris Withers has introduced us to Jemima. Now, sometimes people say to me, Andy, this is all well and good, but, and I know I'm supposed to do the orange side, but I do want to speak to a local business owner, all right? And I don't know anyone who knows them. So I do want to speak to this stranger and I don't know how to find a referral. Well, one thing I would do is I would go straight onto LinkedIn and LinkedIn has a thing called mutual connections. So if you go onto this local business owner who you want to speak to, go onto their profile on LinkedIn and mutual connections, LinkedIn is saying which people are both you and this business owner connected to. And what happens is you go onto this LinkedIn profile of this person you want to meet, look at mutual connections, and let's say there's 10 names who are connected to both you and them. Well, look down that list of 10 because it could well be you know one of those 10 really well. Then what you're going to do is you're going to ring up that person and say this. Oh, hello, Chris. How are you doing? Can I ask your advice about something? Yes, you can. Well, I saw on LinkedIn that both you and I are connected to this local business owner, Jemima. I wanted to have a chat with her because I, I don't want to call her. Everyone hates that. How would you advise I approach her? And if he knows her, it's the referral script again. So even if you don't think you know a referrer, go to their LinkedIn profile and see if you can find a mutual connection. You can still use this. All right. But if you can't even do that, 
here is the best email that you could ever use. So if you can't use this, you can't find a referrer. What you do is you look at this business owner's profile and see if they posted anything recently. Because if they did post something recently, I post stuff on LinkedIn all the time. If you're not connected to me with LinkedIn, if you want to, just connect with me. Because I've just, one of my customers called it verbal puke. <laughs> like, like post stuff, like pretty much every day, giving advice about sales and communication. Right. So what you could do is this. I'll, when you post stuff on LinkedIn, I'll tell you why you do it. Because you want people to read it. You want people to give a hoot. All right. So if I post something called lockdown was better because I'm in a bad mood with my face-to-face uh, -face contacts that day. If you want to get in contact with me, if you can't find a mutual connection, look at what I do to the subject line here. Look at the subject line. Send me a post and it's called, send me an email. It's called this. Andy, your post lockdown was better. I've got a question. I can guarantee 100% I and every single person who posts on LinkedIn will open your email if you say, I've got a question about your post. Definitely. And if you don't have their direct contacts because you're not connected with them yet, in the comments under the post, say, I've got a quick question about this. I'd love to DM you to ask it and um, whatever. And then you can work out how to do it that way. So now you send me this email saying your post lockdown was better. I've got a question for you, Andy. And I open it. And then all you do is you just say, hi, Andy, love the post. It resonated with me because blah, blah, blah. I'd love to share experiences with you about it and brief you on some of the trends I'm seeing. I'll call you tomorrow to chat this through. OK, so it's cool. So if you want to go and speak to someone and you don't know them, go on LinkedIn. If you've got a mutual connection, you might be able to use the referral line, look at the subject line. And if you haven't got a mutual connection, just refer to a post they wrote the other day. And again, it's the same thing when you get through to the gatekeeper. Does Andy know what the call is regarding? Uh, yeah, he does. I sent an email yesterday. Well, what is it regarding? Something that he posted on LinkedIn. Is this a sales call? No, I'm talking about the post he wrote on LinkedIn. But it didn't tell me you were going to call. Well, these things happen, but I did promise I'd call. And I'd hate him to think I broke my promise. That wouldn't be fair. Please, could you put me through? Thank you. Brilliant. Or you can cold call strangers. The final thing I would like you to suggest is this. When you go and speak to your people who are going to help you, I'm going to call them ecclesiastical for short here. So what we've done here now is this. If you look at these things, we've looked at ways we can fill your pipeline a bit. We've looked at words you can say to close the thing. I want to do a little bit on sharing. And then we'll have a look at how to embed it so it becomes easy. So how do we share this? So think of people you're going to share your target <laughs> list with. I'm going to call them ecclesiastical for short. Think about this. If you think about information, I'm calling them intermediaries. Like, Chris, you're just an intermediary to me now. That, that, that's all you mean to me. So if you're going to go and speak to ecclesiastical about your pipeline and people you want to speak with and all that sort of stuff, um, then what you do is this. Think about this. If you're going to ask Chris for referrals, if you're going to ask Chris for help, or if you're going to say to Chris, this is our pipeline, do you want to come with us and work with any of these people? So sharing your list with Chris, either way, do you want to work with these people? Or these are people we want to talk to. Do you know any of them? So if you're speaking to anyone who might refer you, the only things I need to know as a referrer is this. I need to know who you want to speak to. So who's your speak? So you want to speak to what sector? Automobile things in Harrow. Yeah, pharmaceutical companies in Britain. So who do you want to speak to? What are the benefits or the afters you're going to give them? And finally, um, how, how can I introduce you? I'll give you an example. I still want to work with some of the salespeople in pharmaceutical companies. So I want you to think of all the pharmaceutical companies you know, and you don't have to do this. I'm using it as an illustration, right? No, please don't do this. Whoops. So... We've got here, I want to speak to the sales directors of large pharmaceutical companies. Why? Because I can help them sell more and hit their targets like I've done with other people. What? What's the script? All I would ask you to do is say to your mate who works in sales in pharmaceutical companies, are you happy with how your sales are going, given everything that's happening in the NHS at the minute? Yeah, or given the restriction in budgets at the minute. Are you happy how your sales are doing, given that? That's all. Now, can you hear, because I've told you those three things, you know, which of your mates to speak to, 
why it's in their interest to have that conversation and what to say to see if I might be able to help them. And that's the perfect thing. Let's say you're exactly the same. Who do you want? Automobile people in Harrow. Why? Because there's a real problem with automobiles being underinsured in Harrow, where you've got some good techniques about that. And what do I say? Well, you say to me, you know your automobile thing. What changes have you made to reflect the new legislation on X? So you've given me the line and I go and talk to my mate who works in automobile da, 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 and I say that line. So, again, if you think about it, all I need, all I need is who do you want? Why is it in their interest and what to say? And you've seen this before, right? Who do you who do you want to speak to? Why is it in their interest? And then we've got an element of what we're going to say there. So if you find that easier, those three questions, I cannot refer you. I cannot refer you unless I know those three things. We've come quite a long way. I think we started off with this easy referrals. We have said there are only four things we have to get right. We have said selling is not about talking to strangers. It's about doing the orange stuff. Every single person, you know, if they were to give you one referral, you would hit every sales target your boss would ever give you. All right. So it's about mechanizing this. So you do two, three, four a week without trying this three H's that I showed you before. I do this. I said like twice a week because I didn't want to intimidate you. To be honest, I do this most days, like with most of my clients and most of my contact. I say, oh, wow, we're on. What else are you working on at the minute? Or to my existing clients, I say, other than the work we're doing together, what else is occupying you at the minute? <gasps> really? That sounds hard. Tell me more about that. How can I help you with that? No, I've no idea either. How about this? Let me think about it. Let me see if I've done anything similar in the past. And if I get some useful insights, I could call you tomorrow. How would that be? Oh, invaluable and incomplete. You can do that all the time. It's really easy. Think of how hard some selling is. That isn't. How are we going to embed it? Here's the golden rule. Every week, as far as growing your pipeline goes, every single week, I would like to humbly suggest to grow your pipeline, you do more than nothing. More than nothing. That's my stretch target for you. Do more than nothing. So we've got about 130 odd people on the call here. Imagine if you all did more than nothing this week. That's 130 things as a minimum. OK, if you do 130 things, all of you, so you're now my team. If you do 130 things for, let's say, 40 weeks next year, that's 5,200 things we'll be doing. That right, 130 of your times 40. Yep, yeah, 5,200 things. Whoa! And that's if you just did more than nothing. If you went to the dizzy heights of doing two things a week, or three, or four, we quickly between us all are doing 10,000 things. The numbers are ridiculous as long as you do more than nothing. Yeah? Now, how do you make sure you do more than nothing? Well, the thing to remember the only way to find time to do this stuff is to change your diary. I'm going to say that again because it's a throwaway sentence, but it's not. It's the most important sentence of this whole webinar. The only way to find time to do anything is to change your diary. You don't have time to come on this webinar, but yet here you are because it's in your diary. All right. What happens if you don't put things in the diary is you start off the week going this week, I'm going to be a referrals winner. And at the end of the week, you go, oh, I didn't have time. And then I say, did you put it in the diary? And you go, no. Well, two things happen if you put it in the diary. Number one, you're reminded to do it because it's in your diary. But number two, you've got time to do it because it's in your diary. Here's what my diary looks like. I found the best things I can do to grow my business are have an upsell conversation. So I have a diary entry says have a three H's conversation. I do it Monday morning. It's nice and easy. We got one of my customers. How are you doing? Good weekend. What are you working on this week? What are your main priorities? What if you need to get done before the end of the year? <gasps> Tell me more. Nice and easy. I ask for a referral on a Tuesday morning. I have a sneezer's chat on a Wednesday morning. I might do a midterm review. It doesn't have to be a big formal thing with like an eight page discussion document. It could just be a quick chat and ask two words. What's changed? All right. Hi, how are you doing? What's changed since I've last spoken to you? Nothing. Clearly, it's more than nothing, isn't it? Let's talk about that. What's changed either within your business or in your business environment outside your business? What's changed? All right. Easy peasy.
I might do a little renewers conversation as well. I'll tell you what I won't do. Wait till halfway through month 12 when they're at the most price sensitive and send out a snotty little email saying, like, just sign here and we can renew. I personally wouldn't do that. I don't think that's very good customer service. So that's what I would do. And then what I also find is important in sales is following up. So I find if you look at those, are they teal colored, those things at the top of the screen? They're the five things I do to generate new opportunities. And at the end of each day, I have a little bit of time to follow up everything that's happened that day. So after my three H's conversation, maybe I've got a bit of follow up action. But I also had a sales meeting then. That'll have a follow up action. I'm doing a webinar then. I've got a follow up action to that. I need to send me slides through to Chris Withers and so on. Now, here's a question for you. Play at home for fun. If you look at my diary here, you can see that every single week I am going to do these five things to generate leads. All right. Fill my pipeline. And the things I've chosen are things most likely to work. I've not got cold call strangers because I hate it. All right. The top of the teal color. They're the things I'm doing. Now, I'm doing five things there. That's way beyond what I'm asking you to do. I'm just asking you to have more than nothing in your diary. Not just literally more than nothing in your diary. So I said I got a question for you. That's not a question yet. All right. So I've got that at the top. I've got that at the bottom to make sure I follow up. Here's my question. If you look at my diary, what color appears most in my diary at the minute? Yes, white. That is the most prominent color in my diary at the minute. It's not navy. It's not teal. The most prominent color in my diary is white. I have still got... 95% of my diary free to do my day job. And in my experience of talking to brokers and many other sectors as well, what people do is they try and fit this stuff around the day job. It's not the right way to do it. Work out the rhythm you want to do, put that in your diary as I've done, and then fit your day job around it. Now, if you do what I'm doing, look at this. It wasn't just two things I do. It's five things I do. All right. But I do these five things every week without fail and you can do the math and you can see how that works so what changes do i want you to make to your diary might i humbly suggest more than none and then hand over to chris withers who i've not mentioned for a while yet but all i would ask for all of you to do is this think of everything you've heard today what are you going to do all right so i don't want like looking back i hope you've enjoyed it. i mean i hope you have but it's not i hope you've enjoyed it so what are you going to do with it so of everything we said, look at the chat box, the thing you found most helpful. What are you going to do? Secondly, when's it going in your diary? Because if it doesn't go in your diary, you'll forget it and or you won't have time to do it. And then thirdly, who's going to hold you to account? Because we've all put things in our diaries that have come up when we're busy and we press dismiss. And if that happens, it doesn't work. So you might just want to have a chat with your manager. Or if you are a manager, have a chat with your team and hold each other to account. Very simple. Let's say you decide as a team you're going to ask for one referral a week. Well, what you could do is at the end of each week, you could just have a team meeting and have a standard agenda item saying, go around the room. Did you all ask for one referral and how did it go? So that holds you to account for doing it, because with the best will in the world, if you don't hold it to account, you might press dismiss. If you don't put it in the diary, we're never going to have time to do it. And if you don't take any action, well, guess what happens? Actually, nothing. But we've agreed as a minimum, all we want to do is more than nothing. I've got this rather sexy last slide for you. Look at all that. I don't want to put that up too much because it's not very sexy. But please do more than nothing. And I hope this really works for you. And I'm going to hand over to, I think I mentioned him before, Chris Withers to wrap this up. Thanks, everyone. Brilliant, Andy. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'm conscious everybody's you know given up an hour of their time, and we're we're kind of at that hour. But uh, thank you, Andy, for on behalf of everybody. Just by looking at the chat, I can see that people have taken lots from this. I said at the start that this was a very deliberate topic because this is important to us at Ecclesiastical. We can't help you with motor companies in Harrow, but we can help you with heritage, with education, with charity. We can do the the who, the why, the what. We can help you with that. So please. You know, expect our call and and talk to your account manager about how we can work together on this. But um, thank you all for giving up an hour of your time this morning, and thank you especially to Andy. So um, cheerio, everyone. Cheerio.